good evening. You're watching the main news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Anne Reeson. And I'm Britton Clennett. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Financial Secretary hints at future pension reforms but says filibustering isn't helping. China scrambles fighters after Japanese jet carries out dangerous actions in air defence zone. Ukrainians vote in divisive presidential election. The financial secretary says the decision on introducing a universal pension scheme should not be rushed as it has far-reaching effects. John Sung stressed the idea involves a lot of policy considerations and should not be used as a bargaining chip. Radical lawmakers from the pan-democratic camp have been delaying the passage of the government's budget bill by demanding universal retirement protection. Their filibustering tactics failed, and lawmakers are now voting on more than 1,200 amendments to the bill. Writing in his online diary, Finance Minister John Tsang made it clear that such a scheme involves a range of policy considerations and has far-reaching effects, so a decision on implementing it should not be rushed. Tsang said retirement protection was a very important issue and should not be used as a bargaining chip. He stressed that no system is perfect and that the government is looking at different types of pension schemes around the world. Tsung noted that the subject was actually debated in the 1990s, when the idea of giving those aged 65 and over a monthly stipend was bandied about. There was a public consultation, but a consensus couldn't be reached. That's why the mandatory provident fund was introduced. The finance chief conceded that the MPF cannot offer financial protection to everyone. Housewives and others who are not employed are not covered by the scheme, so there is much room for improvement. Critics argue that millions of people's savings are put in the hands of investors and can easily be gambled away if they make a wrong move. The government's next step, he wrote, is to come up with a fund that can help the working population achieve a balanced investment with lower risk and high returns that may also force fund management firms to reduce their fees. Some conceded that laws governing the MPF are nearly 20 years old, so it is the right time to review the scheme and open the discussion on different types of retirement protection. Moderate pan-Democrats have criticised the police for refusing to issue a document the Occupy Central organisers need for their events to be legal. While Commerce Under Secretary Godfrey Leung has thanked the LegCo president for making him famous overnight after Tsang Yuk Singh failed to recognise him at a meeting this week. The SMEs. Do you know who for this man is? Decades. Well, neither did LegCo president Sun Yok Singh, who was left red-faced on Friday when League of Social Democrats lawmaker Leung Kwok Hung asked him to name the official in attendance. Sung flipped through his documents and after an awkward 40 seconds of discussion with his assistant, Sung eventually asked Godfrey Leung to identify himself instead. The LegCo chief yesterday apologised to Leung, who incidentally is Commerce Under Secretary. Leung, who's been in the job six months, today thanked Sung for making him famous overnight, adding that not being recognised wasn't such a big deal. The incident has raised fresh questions about the roles of undersecretaries and political assistants, appointed by the chief executive to help ministers liaise with lawmakers, but criticised for their high salaries and limited impact. Meanwhile, convener of the Alliance for True Democracy, Joseph Cheng, today slammed as disappointing and regrettable the police's decision not to issue a letter of no objection, a prerequisite for any big public protest to the Occupy Central organizers. Police Commissioner Andy Tsung yesterday denied claims of political interference over the force's attitude to the planned civil disobedience protest. Tsung stressed that the chief executive had stated a simple truth, that police would never approve a protest that by definition was intended to be illegal. After a nine-year wait, the Medical Council has finally made a decision regarding the death of celebrity couple Eugenia Lau and Peter Jones' baby. It decided that obstetrician Christine Choi is guilty of professional misconduct, while paediatrician Wan Kam Ming wasn't. Winner Wong reports. Before today's hearing, singer Peter Chung and his actress wife Eugenia Lau spoke about the long-running case. It's kind of complicated at this moment because I don't know what the result will be. But um, we wait for nine years. I think today we need 
we need to know the truth. And Hong Kong citizens need to know the truth. Lau and Cheng had their first son in 2005. The couple claimed the infant had been healthy and stable throughout the entire pregnancy until Choi induced birth a month before he was due. The baby was transferred to an intensive care unit under the care of Wan Kam Ming. He died a day after he was born. In a preliminary ruling today, the medical council decided that the couple's obstetrician, Christine Choi, was guilty of four charges of professional misconduct. Pediatrician Wan Kam Ming, who took care of the baby while he was in intensive care unit, was not guilty of professional misconduct. For the, the verdict, I think, um, when we heard about guilty, that's what we suspect for a long time. And uh, I think it proved that what we did for nine years is worth it. It showed that um, the system is have some problem, and uh, I think it needs to be improved for sure. The result of the case was meant to be revealed on Mother's Day, but the council postponed the ruling for two weeks. Today's announcement ends a long and painful nine-year court battle for the couple, officially bringing the case to a close. Wina Wong, ATV News. China and Japan are accusing each other of dangerous actions by military planes over a disputed part of the East China Sea. Chinese fighter jets came within meters of Japanese military planes. Arthur Akiola reports. State media quoted the Defense Ministry as saying it had scrambled planes after two Japanese jets entered airspace it owns over the East China Sea. The ministry claims the intrusion yesterday morning disturbed joint maritime exercises between China and Russia. Beijing insists its fighters were deployed to protect the security of planes and ships taking part in the exercise. In a statement read out on mainland television, the central government accused the Japanese pilots of carrying out dangerous actions and a serious violation of international laws, which could have easily been misunderstood and even led to an unexpected mid-air incident. China has called on Japan to respect the legal rights of the Chinese and Russian navies, or else there will be consequences. Japan's defense ministry hit back, saying the Chinese jets were the ones carrying out dangerous actions, coming within 30 meters of its planes. It called China's handling of the territorial dispute over the top. The incident happened in airspace over the East China Sea, in an air defense zone set up by China last November, despite protests from the U.S. and Japan. The area covers the Diaoyu Islands, which both China and Japan claim to own. Arthur Rukiola, ATV News. Overseas, Ukrainians are voting today in a presidential election which follows months of violence and unrest after the overthrow of former leader Viktor Yanukovych. Voter turnout was said to be high, except in some eastern cities that are separatist strongholds. Ukrainians headed to polling stations today to vote in the country's first presidential election since former leader Viktor Yanukovych was toppled by Western-backed protesters in February. Since then, the country has been plagued by unrest. There are 18 candidates running in what's being billed by some as the most important election since the former Soviet country won independence from Moscow 23 years ago. Confectionery tycoon Petro Poroshenko is expected to win the election. The former foreign minister and economy minister is pro-Europe and supported the Western-backed overthrow of democratically elected President Yanukovych. Another candidate, former Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko, was seen casting her vote today. She was kicked out of the last Western-backed government for corruption and ended up in jail. She's promising peace, justice and European membership. Western-funded election monitors say there's been a high turnout in most of the country, except in some parts of the east, including Donetsk, where separatists had vowed to disrupt the elections. I felt that many people are afraid. We talked with voters, uh, NGO uh, organization, we talked with people from the electoral commissions, we talked with the main advisors of the governor of Donetsk, we talked with people in the streets because we walked in the streets and I, I can feel 
that uh, there are many people that are afraid. Many in the East see the election as a sham, and are angry the Moscow-friendly president they voted for in the last election was kicked out. The Thai army has appealed to the U.S. for understanding after Washington suspended aid to the country. Meanwhile, small rallies were held in Bangkok against a military coup despite a ban on demonstrations. A few hundred people took to the streets of the Thai capital today, defying a ban on public gatherings imposed by the army, which took power in a bloodless coup on Thursday. The protesters shouted for the army to get out. There were minor scuffles between protesters and soldiers. In the past few days, the military has detained former Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinwat and other political leaders, dissolved the Senate and restricted the press. They've pushed our heads down for so long. I'm 62 years old and I don't want this anymore. Please, soldiers, stop, complained this woman. I don't want a dictatorship. I don't want a coup. I want elections, said this demonstrator. The army says elections will go ahead as planned next month, but it wants to carry out sweeping reforms before the vote. It also wants to pay rice farmers money owed to them by Yingluck's government, a scheme widely seen as bribery for votes. Military leader General Prayath Chanocha called it a sacrifice for the nation to build unity and end conflicts. Furthermore, in Chiang Mai, a traditional stronghold of Yingluck's red shirt supporters, the army was quick to break up another small anti-coup rally overnight. Troops travelling in army vehicles swooped into the area where protesters had gathered to voice opposition to the military's move. The scene grew tense when a protester refused to let go of a concrete pole. Six demonstrators were arrested for defying the protest ban. Meanwhile, the army has also responded to a U.S. decision to suspend military aid to Thailand because of the coup. Critics argue the move illustrates Washington's inconsistent foreign policy after it recently helped protesters in Ukraine oust their democratically elected government. Thai army officials insist in their case they had no choice but to intervene. We seek for a kind understanding of the situation in, in our country. Uh, one template cannot be um, applied to every situation. In a televised statement, the army assured people that all detainees are safe and are being treated well. They have been provided with an appropriate place and surroundings, said Deputy Army Spokesman Win Tai Suvari. They were not tied up, beaten or tortured by any means. Yesterday, the army said Yingluck and other political leaders will be released once they have reached common ground on solving the country's problems. Still to come on ATV's main news, son of Hollywood film director kills six in drive-by shooting spree. Madrid celebrates and mourns Real's Champions League victory over Atletico. Be cool. Keep updated with the international music scene. Warner Music Power Station, Thursday night at 10. Why 天時事業,唔好在戶外玩那麼久了
大热天时喺户外做嘢，最好着浅色同埋通爽嘅衫，再加埋顶阔边帽，好似我咁，仲要时不时去阴凉嘅地方唞唞啊！如果唔舒服，就快啲睇医生啦。From June 1st, the maximum relevant income level for MPF contributions will be increased from $25,000 to $30,000 per month. This means that for people earning $25,000 or more per month and their employers, the maximum MPF contributions will increase to $1,500 each. This will help employees save more for retirement. The new level also applies to self-employed persons. Resort of Sochi is always a dream destination for holidaymakers. Enjoying a long tradition as Russia's number one spa, it offers everything everyone dreams of. Leisure time, life's a beach. Friday night at 8:30. Seven people are dead and more than a dozen injured after a gunman went on a shooting spree in Southern California. Police had apparently ignored warnings from his parents that he planned to carry out the attacks in videos he posted on the internet. Arthur Kiona reports. The shooting spree took place in the Southern California college town of Isla Vista. The gunman drove around in a black BMW, spraying bullets at college kids. And that was at the Alpha Phi sorority in the 800 block of Embarcadero del Norte. Several members of this sorority reported hearing loud and aggressive knocking at the front door, which lasted for one to two minutes. Fortunately, no one opened the door. And shortly afterwards, witnesses reported seeing three young women who were standing outside in the vicinity shot by the suspect from across the street. Two of the women died. The suspect drove to a nearby cafe and gunned down another 20-year-old student. The rampage ended in a shootout with police. We heard gunfire, then we heard a large crash, very violent, and then I looked outside and then the BMW had crashed into parked cars and made its way into the sidewalk. We looked outside, police showed up almost instantly, cleared the car, they showed up with their rifles, they cautioned off, they set up a perimeter, um, ambulance showed up, it was very chaotic. The suspect was found dead inside the car. He was identified as 22-year-old Elliot Roger, son of Hollywood director Peter Roger, whose main credits include The Hunger Games, a film about teenagers killing each other. Roger had been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, the same condition Sandy Hook School shooting suspect Adam Lanza was said to be suffering from and was being treated by therapists. Police described him as severely mentally disturbed and say the killing spree began in his flat. It appears as though suspect Roger murdered three victims within his residence in the 6500 block of Seville Road prior to the shooting rampage that took place last night. The three male victims appear to have been repeatedly stabbed. In a video posted online, a young man who identifies himself as the suspect bitterly complains of loneliness and sexual frustration, warning that he would take revenge. It's not fair. You girls have never been attracted to me. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me, but I will punish you all for it. It's an injustice, a crime, because I don't know what you don't see in me. I'm the perfect guy. And yet you throw yourselves at all these obnoxious men instead of me, the supreme gentleman. I will punish all of you for it. <laughs> he goes on to say he will slaughter every single blonde he sees. Reports say Roger's parents called police around a month ago, concerned about his online videos. Officers interviewed him but said he wasn't dangerous enough to be locked up on mental health grounds. His parents released a statement through their lawyer. 
the Rogers family offers their deepest compassion and sympathy to the families involved in this terrible tragedy. We are experiencing the most inconceivable pain and our hearts go out to everybody involved. This latest shooting is set to once again reignite the debate on U.S. gun laws, with some victims' parents already heading out at groups like the National Rifle Association. Our son Christopher Martinez and six others are dead. Why did Chris die? Chris died because of craven, irresponsible politicians and the NRA. They talk about gun rights. What about Chris's right to live? When will this insanity stop? Police said Roger was armed with three legally purchased handguns registered to him and 41 loaded magazines. Since Roger was being treated for mental problems, it's likely he was also taking psychiatric drugs, which are being increasingly linked to mass shootings. But authorities appear reluctant to investigate the apparent dangers they pose. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News. Back in Hong Kong, a concerned group has warned that the heavy metal content of many local vegetables exceeds health limits. It's calling for a revamp of food safety rules so they're in line with international standards. Winner Wong has more. Between March and April, a food concern group called Food Watch visited markets in Hong Kong, Mong Kok, Sham Shui Po and Yunlong. It took 20 samples of 12 types of vegetables and tested them for heavy metal content. The results showed that 20 percent of the vegetables had heavy metal contents that exceed the local health limit. Lawmaker Helena Wong said other places, including the mainland, have adopted different heavy metal standards according to vegetable type, like splitting them up into leafy and root varieties. She criticized the government for only having one standard. Heavy metals can cause cancer and kidney problems. At the same time, a survey by the Hong Kong Society for Rehabilitation has found that people don't really know much about kidney diseases. Eighty percent of those asked believe people with final stage kidney failure would be extremely weak and 60 percent said they would probably need to stay in hospital. About half also felt they wouldn't be able to work well, if at all. But kidney patients say modern dialysis treatment allows people with kidney problems to lead a normal working life. They're urging the government to change policies and improve education so more employers are willing to hire people with kidney diseases. Wina Wong, ATV News. Time now for sports with Raymond Young and Real Madrid at Champions League winners. Well, that's right, but their city rivals were heartbroken. Real drew level in the dying seconds before sweeping Atletico Madrid aside in extra time to steal their 10th European title, ending a 12-year wait for La Decima. Watching the live broadcast on big screens at the Bernabeu, Real Madrid fans almost broke into tears when they escaped defeat against crosstown rivals Atletico Madrid by scoring a last gaffe's equaliser to force extra time. And it was a lopsided affair from that point, as Real poured in three extra-time goals to seal a 4-1 victory. The Champions League trophy was not only Real's first since 2002, but also their 10th European title, Ola de Cima in Spanish. At the Vincente Calderon Stadium on the other side of Madrid, the bitter loss was too hard for many Atletico fans to swallow. They have come up short again after losing to Bayern Munich in their last and only other appearance in 1974. But the league title was still some consolation for fans to take home, and many believe they will be back here soon. Atletico opened the scoring after the 36th minute, when Diego Godin seized on an error by Iker Casillas to head the ball into the net. But a stunning equaliser by Sergio Ramos in stoppage time rescued Rayo and sent the match into extra time. Real then went ahead thanks to a header by Gareth Bell in the 110th minute. Atletico had already run out of steam, but Marcelo hadn't as he fired home a long shot minutes later. And Cristiano Ronaldo added the icing on the cake with a penalty in the closing seconds. The comeback victory gave plenty of reasons for Real fans to cheer about. 
as they made their way from the Estadio de Luz to downtown Lisbon following the scintillating match. While Atletico supporters just wanted to go home, scenes like these in downtown Madrid might give them a second thought. The Galacticos jumped onto a tour bus to meet their fans after touching down in Madrid as celebrations carried on well into the night. Fireworks lit up the sky as the streets turned into a big dance party, complete with makeshift bars. Fearing clashes between rival factions, there was a heavy police presence around the city, although revelers mostly behaved themselves. In Formula One, there will be another Mercedes front row at the Monaco Grand Prix, which will set off in a moment's time. Tight corners and sharp elevation changes are just some of the challenges drivers face at the Monaco Grand Prix, seen as the most prestigious race on the Formula One calendar. The Mercedes duo, who have dominated the season so far, had few issues speeding along the narrow and twisty Monte Carlo circuit. Nico Rosberg had a mostly trouble-free session until he locked up his front wheels and drove off the track in the waning seconds of the third and final qualifier. That forced his teammate Lewis Hamilton to abandon his lap, even though he was on course to overtake Rosberg for the afternoon's fastest pace, and the Briton was obviously not happy after the race. The timing of the incident, which Hamilton described as ironic, led to speculation of foul play by Rosberg, although he escaped disciplinary action. Red Bull's Daniel Ricciardo finished third, ahead of his four-time defending champion teammate Sebastian Vettel. Kimi Raikkonen came sixth, one place behind Ferrari teammate Fernando Alonso, as the Finn continues to chase his first podium this season. And a look at the weather before we go. It was a sizzling day outside with plenty of sunshine throughout the day. At the observatory, temperatures range from 26.7 to 32.6 degrees, the highest so far this year. The relative humidity was between 64 and 87 percent. Winds were moderate coming in from the southwest. Let's check on the ultraviolet reading. The maximum recorded for the day was 12. And tomorrow's UV index will be around 12 as well. Now for a look at the weather in the region. Our subtropical ridge continues to bring fine weather to the coast of southeastern China. And now the satellite images. It's generally fine over the coast of southern China and the northern part of the South China Sea. And here's what we can expect over the next few days. Summer is approaching as it will be very hot on a fine day tomorrow. Temperatures will range from 28 to 33 degrees. Also hot with sunny periods and a few showers on Tuesday. And expect similar conditions for the rest of the week. And here are the latest pollution readings under the Air Quality Health Index. General stations are at 2 to 3, meaning the health risk is low. Roadside levels are at 2 to 4, and the health risk is low to moderate. Finally, here's the weather around the world. That's our main news for Sunday night. We'll have an update in an hour. Also, tonight's late news is at 10 o'clock. I'm Britton Quinnett. I'm Ray Minya. And I'm Anne Rhys Sim. Thanks for watching ATV. Good night. Good night. Good night. Coming up, check in current news. Newsline. Asia Craze, rocking the world.
ATV Mr. Asia Contest 2014 is now open for online application. You don't have to go to Japan, you're already there. Follow Begin Japanology into the world of Japanese culture. Experience the traditional and modern life. Reveal the pursuit of romance and perfection. Every angle presents a unique Japan. Begin Japanology, tonight at 8.30. It's called a majestic tropical sanctuary. For ages, descendants have benefited from its richness. Discovering the allure, it takes faith and techniques. Heading to the destination, extraordinary views are all the way.